Y bienvenidos a la Daily Hustle. This is wild Daily Hustle. No abate por No Filter Network. Will the Thrill Clark. No abate por No Filter Network. Miguelito Sandiaguito, a.k.a. Bobby Barrels, a.k.a. Bobby Ball. Not with us today. Could be soaking in his tears in the desert right now. After last night's Arizona Diamondbacks loss. But, regardless, dead or alive, Snakes win in the World Series or not, we salute our boys. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! Here we go, folks. Remember this, when we are useful, we are... That's right, class. We're useful. And when we're juiceless, we are... Fucking useless. It is as simple as that. A very pleasant good morning to you on the first day of November 2023. We were on last night during the World Series. Deuces wild, live, and in action. And through the course of, I don't know, the 90 minutes that we were on, the Diamondbacks laid a fucking egg. And it was difficult to watch the bullpen absolutely imploded they were getting ripped as if it were a spring training game and it was one dude to the next and the next and the next and all of a sudden the chatter came online and the images of jack morris started showing up everywhere And look, I get it. If they had a Jack Morris, don't you think they would start a fucking Jack Morris? Of course they would have. But they're dealing with the hand they were dealt. And they have to play that hand. Well, the best chance the Diamondbacks had of winning that game last night was basically by doing what they did. Now, whether or not... The pitchers executed the game plan that they had. I don't know what to tell you. It didn't happen. So, because of that, the Diamondbacks are now in a serious hole. They're down 3-1. Look, if you want to find some hope, if you're a D-backs fan, look no further than what they did against Philadelphia. The fact that if they win tonight, they go back to Texas. And we know they're not scared. This isn't a team that is going to be intimidated. This is a team that I think in all likelihood, if they win tonight, they will force a game seven. You have to get more production out of that pin, though. It's scary because I'm not sure they have shut down dudes that can go ahead and stop this Texas offense. Even with Adolis Garcia out, Max Scherzer out. If I'm the Diamondbacks, I'm looking at that, and I'm not relying on it. But one of the things that Will and I talked about last night, you can't let Corey Seager beat you. You just can't do it. I don't even care if Adolis was still in the lineup. There's two guys and two guys only in that whole lineup that I'm not going to let beat me. Number one was obviously Adolis Garcia. Number two is Corey Seager. Well, with Garcia out, then you have to know Seager cannot be the dude that is going ding-dong Donkey Kong off you. It's a slash of the throat, your own, if that's the case. So I know the D-backs know this, and I know the pitchers know this, but when you hang... Corey Seager, a slider, smack dab in the middle of the fucking plate. And this thing gets bamboozled 400 and some odd feet. And we're looking around like, oh, we're surprised. I can't believe that happened. What have you guys been watching? You seen the same shit we've seen? This guy's locked in right now. Don't fuck with him. It's as simple as that. So taking that a step further... How do they get back into this? I mean, that that becomes a really 
big question. Let's take a look before I get into the articles and everything else going on. Let's take a look at the matchup that we're going to have tonight. So it's going to be Nathan Eovaldi, who they've gotten to, and Zach Gallen. Gallen's going to have to step up. If you have Gallen win this, then I would think you're really confident with Merrill Kelly going in game six. The question then becomes, how do you piece together game seven? I don't know. Maybe it's bringing both of them back on the shortest rest possible. And I don't even want to get ahead of ourselves. I think the Diamondbacks at this point, if you have Gallon go and shit hits the fan or whatever, I it's all hands on deck. I mean, this is the time that you do not want to leave anybody in the barn. Get all your horses out, and you got to run with them. So the game time tonight is 5.03 Pacific time. That will be 7.03 Texas time. Heading out to Houston today, by the way. So I'm actually probably going to miss most of that game. I'm going to be on a flight, but I should be able to catch the tail end of it when we land. Okay, so like I mentioned, the Diamondbacks, wait, hold on a second, because I don't, I cannot forget this. The Bet Online title sponsor, that's right, the last of the major pro sports league kicks off this week, and Bet Online is your top spot for all your NBA action this season. That was actually last week with MLB postseason, NFL, and college football firing with the NHL in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. Get everything NBA at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access for every sport anytime. Head to Bet Online today to get in on the action. Don't forget to use promo code. Believe, capital B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, so like I mentioned, the D backs were slammed by fans for their pitching. And I, whether it's justified or not, I mean, I don't know. But I think if more than anything, it's you, you give them credit for getting as far as they did with what they have. It said on Monday night, the Arizona Diamondbacks seemingly forgot how to hit. On Tuesday, it was a pitching staff that lost the plot. The Texas Rangers hammered the D-backs in game four of the World Series, 11-7, taking command need 3-1 lead in the series. The Diamondbacks came into the game with the intention of letting their bullpen handle the entire night much as they did in a 6-5 win over the Philadelphia Phillies in game four of the NLCS. But the Rangers took a jackhammer to that plan. Four different Arizona relievers gave up a run or more, while Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, and Jonah Hyde each homered on the night, and Simeon finished with five RBIs. Good for Simeon, by the way. Former Cal Bear, former... Oakland Athletic has really worked on his craft. He's a stud. Yeah, it was a three-run homer by Simeon that made it 10 nothing, And it just kept coming. It says, and more than a few MLB fans, pundits alike, were happy to see the Diamondbacks get punished for utilizing a bullpen game in the World Series. Alongside questioning some other pitching decisions along the way. Here's Brian Murphy, KMBR Murphy. We love Murphy. He said, there is something deeply satisfying about seeing a bullpen start in the World Series completely and totally implode. Well, look, I think Murph's right. And I don't say this because I want to see the Diamondbacks implode. I don't say this because I wish ill will upon bullpens. I am somebody that is a firm believer that having a starter that could go 100 plus pitches to lead off a game and then you're able to utilize your bullpen in the seventh, eighth and ninth inning is the ideal way to go. So 
seeing relievers run out one after another after another starting in the first inning is no bueno. You know what a reliever is, by the way? It's a failed starter. Basically, everybody starts out as a starter. And when they fail as a starter, they go to the bullpen. And oftentimes, you'll have an uptick in velocity, and you'll see somebody have a resurgence with their career. But ultimately, it's a failed starter. That's what the fuck it is. So if we could avoid going there as long as possible, it's probably a pretty good idea. And Killian here. They're going to all the Bay Area pundits, by the way. She said, good. Throw a bullpen game of the World Series. You deserve to get your ass kicked. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Stirrups Now says, game four being treated like it's a spring training game. This is what I was talking about when I first came on. Hoping six, seven pitchers all have it is a big ass. Jack Morris weeps. Not Gaetti says, it's unbelievable that we've reached a point where team plan for bullpen days in the World Series. Just look at this game. It's the top of the fourth inning. Arizona's on their fifth pitcher, and they're losing 10 nothing. What's next? Are we going to see a position player pitch today? It's a very good point. Ben Mahler. I like Ben Mahler. Did his uh, show on Fox back in the day. He used to come on late night. It says, Diamondbacks deserve to get obliterated for going with bullpen game and freaking World Series. This is cosmic justice. Save these for the Cactus League. Rangers laughter. Uh, Cameron Cox is not even through three innings, four pitchers and 10 runs. Fans should get their money back. Also a new rule. You must have four starters to make the playoffs. Uh, the Rangers are destroying the Arizona bullpen game. The Phillies lost because their hitters were stupid and got themselves out. That much is being obvious. Uh, Bryce here says we're an hour in and just starting the third inning. Bullpen games are an abomination. Uh, Steel Co. or Steel City says, Ken, this game, please be the game we look back on as the death of the bullpen game. <sighs> the article goes on. It says it should be noted that the Rangers have also been incredible on the road this October, winning 10 games away from home this postseason, and they continue to absolutely rake with their six postseason game, scoring seven or more runs. But from Arizona's perspective, losing two straight games at home, one in which their offense only mustered one run, and the other in which the planned bullpen game backfired immensely, is nothing short of disastrous. Yes, the Diamondbacks will now have their three starters they've utilized Throughout the postseason, Zach Gallon, Merrill Kelly, and Brandon fought available for the next three games, depending on how long this series goes. The Rangers will be without starting pitcher Max Scherzer and Adolfo Garcia for the rest of the World Series. A huge blow to them. Well, we'll see. It could be. And the D-backs deserve some credit for not folding, putting up seven runs in total after facing a 10-0 deficit. I do respect the shit out of that. And... Like I told Thrill last night, at some point, you're Tori Lavello. You got to kind of rally the boys up and be like, look, motherfuckers, I don't care if we lose this game. That's fine. We don't come back. We don't win. Cool. I don't expect to. But from here on out, until the game's over, let's get our shit together and show these fans that we care. Well, sure enough, the Dimebacks went out there and they did exactly that. Seven runs. I mean, from that point, because it was 10 nothing, it was you know, 7 1 D backs. Obviously, the over was a no brainer for this one. It says, uh, the and the Dimebacks deserve some credit for not folding, put up seven runs, uh, 10 in deficit. It says, still, there's a chance for the Dimebacks to even the series and press the pitching advantage they would have had going forward. Instead, the Rangers needing just one more win in the series may never have to solve the Game 7 pitching conundrum that Scherzer's injury left them. The Diamondbacks left with zero margin for error, and now they're just hoping to get this series back to Texas. So, no, it wasn't a good night in the desert. Make that two in a row. All right. <clears throat> I think Zach Gallon wins tonight. And then I think 
Merrill Kelly wins game six in Texas. At which point you have the Rangers with no scheduled starter for game seven. And you have Brandon Fott, who has been fantastic in the postseason. I know it sounds crazy, but don't be surprised if we're sitting here in a few days talking about how the Diamondbacks pull off a fucking miracle. Just don't come to me and be like, oh, man, I can't believe it. Yo, the up and down and out. Look, it might not happen. They may lose tonight and it's over and we're on to talking about football tomorrow. But there's a chance this happens. The way it's lined up, I got to believe. I mean, we'll look at it, but I got to believe the Diamondbacks are going to be slight favorites tonight. At home, we'll see. They then would go to Texas and probably be about even money again. So the next two games are coin flips. And then you get to game seven. I think they'd be slight underdogs, even with fought. As, again, they would be in game six just because of the home field advantage thing. But that's obviously proven to be dog shit. And it doesn't matter because the Rangers have killed it on the road. Okay, it's 847 a.m. Pacific time. 1047 out in Texas. I have a 9 a.m. sports innovation show. So, going to abbreviate this daily hustle a little bit this morning, a couple stories that I wanted to get into. One of them here is the one big lesson MLB can learn from the Rangers in the 2023 world series. It says there is no such thing as too much pitching depth. The Texas Rangers have spent aggressively as aggressively as any team in baseball in recent years. And their roster is loaded up with a high profile talent, including the 500 million trade infield of Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. Both of those all-star infielders went deep in the 11-7 to victory in game four to help the Texas Rangers take a commanding 3-1 series lead over the Arizona Diamondbacks. But it's the club's pitching depth that has put them on the doorstep of a World Series title. Earlier in the day, the Rangers were dealt a blow when Max Scherzer back spasm was removed from the roster following the early exit game three for a team that has navigated injuries all season. It was just another opportunity to put their enviable pitching depth to test left-hander Andrew Heaney was not supposed to be the starting pitcher in game four of the world series. John Gray will start game four for the Texas Rangers while the Arizona Diamondbacks will go with a bullpen game. This was what was said by Bob Nightingale. That was October 30th at 10.38 a.m. When Game 3 starter Max Scherzer was forced to exit after just three innings with back spasms, the team was forced to use John Gray to bridge the gap to the bullpen, and he delivered with three scoreless innings of one-hit ball. In the wake of the unexpected turn of events, it looked like the Rangers would be forced to counter a bullpen game from the Arizona Diamondbacks with a bullpen game of their own. Fronted by starter turned reliever turned starter Andrew Heaney. The 32 year old signed a two year, $25 million deal during the offseason, made 27 starts before moving to the bullpen in September, which is a role he was expected to fill in the playoffs before Scherzer was sidelined late in the season. He was essentially used as a bulk opener in game one of the ALDS, allowing two hits and one run in three, two, three and two thirds of an inning. And he struggled in a similar spot in game four of the ALCS when he gave up. Four hits and three earned runs while recording just two outs. A similar showing on Tuesday would have put the Rangers in a difficult spot. Even with their offense firing all cylinders, instead he gave the club five innings of four hit, one run ball. He scattered three hits without allowing a run over the first four innings, keeping all the momentum in the Texas dugout while the offense piled up 10 quick runs. The type of next man up approach is nothing new for the Rangers, especially on the pitching side of things. Despite long prize free agent signing Jacob Grom to an early season injury. So they lost to Grom. They then get Scherzer. They lose Scherzer. 
So you have these guys that you thought were going to help them win a World Series. So it just goes to show you, you get out what you put in. Because here are the Rangers doing everything they can to bring a World Series title to Arlington. And in the midst of bringing these other guys in, really all they were doing is creating this massive depth chart of guys, like quality guys like a John Gray or an Andrew Heaney who could come in. I mean, Heaney's a slouch, man. He's making 12 and a half million bucks a year. John Gray's filthy. He throws almost 100 miles per hour. It says Texas in 2023 total spent on starting pitching. $95 million. That's just on their starters. Texas 20, 23% spent 37% of their payroll is on starting pitching. Yeah, it should be. At least, I think that's definitely the right number. Since the beginning of a World Series team's pitching line and the box score should never look like this, the D-backs were already on their fifth different pitcher before they recorded their 10th out of the game, and that's more or less how they had drawn things up, even if things had gone well. So the Arizona Diamondbacks, total spent on starting pitching, $16.3 million. Arizona's percent of that compared to their payroll, 13.7%. That's wild. Just the fact that the Rangers have $95 million of starting pitching. And the Arizona Diamondbacks have $16 million. That obviously was on full display last night. Okay, the World Series ratings plunge. But it says it won't matter if Fox lands a game six. Well, we'll see. It said, if you're surprised by the state of the World Series TV ratings, then you haven't been paying attention to baseball's ongoing Jeans in a Bathtub Act. An implacable dimin- dim- diminution? Dim, dimin, can I read? An implacable diminution that's been going on for decades. I don't know if I've seen that word. I'm serious. Demin, D-I-M-I-N-U-T-I-O-N. Diminution. I don't know. I kind of like it. I just, the way it's used, I figure I can give you a definition. But, huh. I always thought I spoke and read English. Maybe not. For good or ill, what was once lauded as the national pastime is now primarily a local phenomenon. And the evidence of that retreat to paro childism. I mean, can we fucking quit with the big words? Seriously. P A R O C H I A L I S M is stamped all over the Nielsen ratings. Just give me the fucking numbers. I'm not asking for your big fancy words and cryptic analysis. Jeez. Working backwards from Saturday night's game two, a suspense-free outing that saw the Arizona Diamondbacks even up the series with a 9-1 win over the Texas Rangers. Fox's deliveries have been predictably muted, having rotated back stateside after a four-year stint in South Korea. Arizona's Merrill Kelly gave up three hits in his seven innings on the mound at performance that took place in front of a mere 8.15 million viewers and a 4.0 household rating. And that's bad? Hmm. Game two now stands as the least watched World Series broadcast in history. The previous low was set in the bubble of Globe Life Field during the COVID blightened 2020 Fall Classic 8.34 million. While the World Series ratings have been on a steady downward track since the early 80s when ABC and NBC would average more than 40 million viewers per game. Holy shit. 
The failure to reach so much as 10 million viewers each night is a recent phenomenon. Prior to the asterisk late in 2020 season, the only time a network had fallen short of the 7-0 threshold was in 2008 when the first pitch of Game 3 of the Phillies race series was held up for 90 minutes by rain, as was the case with the second broadcast of this year's Fall Classic Philadelphia's 5-4 win arrived on a Saturday night when U.S. TV viewership is at an ebb. Primetime college football exacted its pound of flesh as well. And the absence of a representative from the Teming Eastern, I mean, here's another word, Teming, Eastern time zone, which is home to 48% of the TV household. So that's why it matters. Think about that. You're in the Eastern time zone. I mean, that's 50% of the country. So that's why it is a big deal, if, a big reason why they want to start those games earlier. Fox's seven-digit deliveries were far from expected. Number five, Dallas, and number 11, Phoenix, are hardly unassuming markets. Together, they account for 5.18 million TV homes, or 4.2% of the national base. But the relative lack of interest from fans in places like New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, and Boston, not to mention Los Angeles, Chicago, may be chalked up to something that transcends mere sour grapes. Baseball is an animal that sticks to its local hunting grounds, with the regional sports networks accounting for 82% of MLB's in-season TV impressions. Fox's audience for Game 2 was down 24% versus the year-ago Phillies Astros broadcast which was keeping with the 20% drop in Friday night's opener featuring a game time home run in the bottom of the ninth and Adolis Garcia walk-off homer in the 11th game one marked a hell of a start for this year's unlikely matchup. Still, Fox came away with just 9.17 million viewers or 9.35 million if you count streaming deliveries in those who tuned in to the Spanish language feed on Fox Deportes. No matter how you finesse the numbers, however, the fact remains that this year's D-backs Rangers showdown is now responsible for churning out two of the three smallest World Series audiences on record. Okay, <clears throat> I don't give a shit. That's Fox's problem. And I all due respect to Fox. I mean, I worked at Fox. They're good people over there. Ed Gorin was my man. I would have never, I'll say would have never gotten into broadcasting, but he was the guy that gave me my first real shot at broadcasting was someone who believed in me. I'll never forget sitting in the control room and I was watching, it was the Mets were playing, I want to say it was the Cardinals. And obviously Fox was rooting hard for the Mets. And you had David Hill and Ed Gorin and all the other Fox brass in the room with TV, 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 right? And I don't know if it was Albert Pujols or someone hits a home run. And all you hear is, fuck, fuck. And I'm like, whoa, what's that? And then whoever I was standing with explained like, look, this means millions and millions of dollars if New York wins or the loss of millions and millions of dollars if St. Louis wins. So there is heavy rooting interest for these guys. Now, what it says here, I've got about a minute left, but it says because I'm curious about the game six thing. Because if they do have a game six, that could counter a lot of it. It says game six. Okay. All is not lost, however, when it comes to scaring up the largest possible World Series audiences. Duration is everything. Once it becomes apparent that a six game is in the offing, the casual. I mean, here's another word that I just, okay. Offing. The casual fans who may have sat out the early broadcast begin to re-engage with the Fall Classic. Over the last 10 years, the average turnout for a Game 6 has been 14% higher than Game 5. Game 6 is also generally 
what separates a profitable World Series from a bus with each extra evening of baseball beyond the fifth contest generating nearly $35 million in ad sales revenue. If Arizona can stop the Rangers tonight, Fox walks away with this thing a winner, at least once it's made a made good on any under deliveries. Media buyers emphasize that Fox has priced and guaranteed the series in accordance with the hand they were dealt. Most of the make goods can be dolled out within the series itself, especially if the Rangers D-backs require a seventh game. Since it first began broadcasting in October in 1996, Fox has aired seven game sevens, all of which have served up 20 million viewers or more. The smallest turnout for one of these relatively rare cappers came in 2019 when 23.2 million viewers watched the Nationals clinch against the Astros. A similar turnout this time around would give MLB claim to one of the 30 most watched broadcasts of 2023. I don't think they get 20 million, even if they do go to game seven. I mean, it's uh, we're already seeing new record lows. And again, like, I don't give a shit because that's doesn't mean it has to be for everybody. I like the fact that baseball has been localized. Doesn't bother me one bit. Diamondbacks fans, Ranger fans, enjoy. If you're a baseball fan and you're not watching this, that's fucking on you, man. I mean, this is the best of the best. So if you don't want to pay attention, don't, don't pay attention. If you're so wrapped up in your team, I don't – look, I mean, once you play, uh, you start to realize you're like, yeah, I, I, my attachment's not to teams. It's to players. And I root for the story. Simple as that. So, all right, I got to run. Sports Innovation, if you guys want to check me out there, I am uh, going on with those boys. They're just ro- rocking and rolling here on No Filter Network, I think, for the first time. RJ! Yeah. Pa, Ro, Chai, all ism. Thanks, dude. I mean, I, we 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 got we got to have somebody here that knows how to read. Sports innovation coming up next. Everyone have a fantastic day. Back at you tomorrow from H Town. See. Ya.